Hi, I'm Amir Hussain Mirza Bozorg and in this video I want to talk about ultrasonic process simulation using Abacus. How to ask your video related questions? Don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have about the explanations presented in this video using the comments below. We try to answer all questions regarding the video details in the comments below. This is the table of content. I will talk about Abacus steps for ultrasonic simulation, reference papers, problem definition, boundary conditions, using tie constraint, measuring a stable time increment size in the mesh module, and finally results and discussion. In all ultrasonic processes, a high frequency force control or displacement control loading is applied to the structure. For a better explanation of the modeling and simulation procedure of the ultrasonic process and talk about the related tips and tricks, a well-known process named HFMI is considered and discussed in detail. The process consists of an impactor that impacts the fixed specimen with a high frequency vertical sinusoidal displacement. Also, the impactor has a low speed linear horizontal displacement to move along the specimen. Now I want to talk about Abacus steps for ultrasonic simulation. Most of the time, at least one of the sources of nonlinearity is present in the model, so we must use the nonlinear dynamic steps. Nonlinear dynamic steps in Abacus include dynamic implicit, dynamic explicit, and dynamic temp disp explicit. About the dynamic implicit step, if there is repetitive contact in the simulation, using the dynamic implicit step leads to convergence issues which decrease the time increment size. Hence, the simulation will be slow and not efficient anymore. It is inevitable to use the explicit solver in such cases. Also, there is no limitation to use the dynamic explicit step to model the ultrasonic processes. And about the dynamic temp disp explicit step, if the calculation of temperature changes during the process is important, this step must be used. There is no appropriate step in the Abacus standard solver for doing such simulation. And if the calculation of temperature changes during the process is not important, we must use the dynamic explicit step. To model the ultrasonic process, the static general step cannot be used because this step does not account for the inertial forces and assumes that the summation of forces is zero. But in the ultrasonic processes, we have high speed loading which leads to non-zero acceleration in the model, so we can only use the mentioned dynamic steps. Now I want to talk about the reference papers. These are the reference papers of my simulation. The high frequency mechanical impact or HFMI process is simulated according to these papers. The authors investigated the residual stress field induced in the steel specimens via the HFMI process. In this tutorial, the FE modeling and simulation of this process via Abacus are explained in detail. Now I want to show you the reference papers. This is the first reference paper. And this is the second reference paper. Now I want to talk about the problem definition. Um, this is the specimen and this is the rigid punch. The rigid punch has a horizontal displacement with constant speed equal to 2 mm per second and it has a 
vertical sinusoidal displacement with the amplitude equal to 0.4 millimeter and the frequency equal to 100 hertz. And this is the curve of vertical displacement of the punch versus time. Now I want to talk about the boundary conditions. In this model, the specimen has a plane of symmetry parallel to the ZY plane. And I have used this plane of symmetry and I have defined half of the specimen and I have applied symmetric boundary condition to this face of the specimen. I have defined x seam boundary condition. And also the bottom of the specimen is fixed. In this model, I have defined the specimen in two parts. This is part one and this is part two. And if we put part two in this place, we have the complete specimen and this is the mesh of the specimen. These two parts are connected to each other via tie constraint. As the specimen is not created originally in a single part, we can use a smaller number of elements to reduce the simulation time. This procedure will introduce an acceptable error in the results. To maintain the accuracy of calculating stress and strain fields, the element size at the contacting region with the punch is half that of the surrounding parts. As the element size is not the same at some of the boundary surfaces, the tie constraint will not be established entirely so that an acceptable error will be introduced to the results. Actually, in these boundary surfaces, the element size is not the same, but in these boundary surfaces, the element size is the same. In this model, I have used the Verify Mesh tool in the Mesh module to measure the stable time increment size of each of the parts of the specimen. And this is its report. In part 1, the smallest stable time increment is this value and in part 2, the smallest stable time increment is this value. And as this value is smaller than this one, the global stable time increment size of the simulation will be this value. Now I want to talk about using mass scaling method to speed up the simulation. Generally, defining mass scale is not correct in the dynamic simulations. In this case, due to the use of small elements in the middle of the specimen, the global stable time increment is too small, which leads to a low simulation speed. To improve the simulation speed, a higher time increment size is defined for the model. Actually, this value will be used instead of this value. Now I want to show you the abacus model. As you can see, the model consists of three parts, impactor, specimen one, and specimen two. This is specimen one, or the first part, and this is specimen two, or the second part, and this is the impactor, which is an analytical rigid part. I go to the property module. I have defined material for first part and the second part, and I have assumed that uh, they are made of ST37, and I have defined density, elastic behavior, plastic behavior with Johnson Cook hardening, and I have defined Johnson Cook rate dependency. because we are doing a high speed simulation. Now I go to the assembly module and this is the complete specimen. I have defined a dynamic explicit step. In the interaction module, I have defined tie constraint between these two parts to create the complete specimen and I have defined surface to surface contact between the punch and the second part. And also I have defined an interaction property for it. In the load module, 
I have fixed the bottom of the first part and I have defined X symmetry here and I have defined two displacements for the punch. And this is the definition of the sinusoidal amplitude. And this is the mesh of the model. I hide the impactor. Now I want to use the verify mesh tool. I activate this setting to find the elements that their stable time increment is less than 10 to the power of minus 7 seconds. As you can see, all of the elements are highlighted in yellow. It means that the stable time increment of all of the elements are less than this value and this is its report. Now I want to go back to the slides. This is the von Mises stress contour at time equal to 0.45 seconds and this is part 1 and this is part 2 and here you can see the deformation. And this is the mesh of the model and here we have the contour of uh, displacement in the y direction. And here you can see the deformation. And this is the impact force curve versus time. And this is the impact force of the first impact. And as you can see, it is very larger than the other impact forces. And here you can see a periodic behavior. Now I want to go to the abacus visualization module. Now I want to increase the number of legend colors. And I want to remove the impactor. Here you can see the movement of the impactor. And this is the reaction force curve in the y direction. As we have modeled half of the specimen, this force must be multiplied by 2 to give us the correct value of the impact force. The package including abacus files of this simulation are ready to purchase. The package price and the payment details are provided in the video description. In the following tutorials, I will talk about some of the important dynamic procedures including impact, crash and explosion. You can contact me using Telegram or WhatsApp, or you can send email to me. We can have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the AnyDesk, WhatsApp, and we can make special tutorials to your order. 
and we can conduct high quality simulations for your thesis, exercises, and industrial projects. Now I want to suggest you several related videos of our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a good time. Goodbye.